Hello and welcome to another tutorial of System Verilog in 5 minutes. Today we'll be talking about cover group and cover point. There are two variables A and B. They are driven with director stimulus. This is a similar code but the variables are driven randomly. Imagine if the size of the variables are larger, it is harder to add new values with director stimulus. On the other hand, it is easier to increase the number of randomization. The bad thing about randomization is though we do not know what values are being used. To counter that, we can add a cover group to keep track of the values. This is how we define the cover group. Inside the cover group, we can add a cover point. The cover point A and B here will automatically link to the variable A and B here. Then we declare the cover group and then we instantiate it just like a class. Now every time the values are assigned, we can call the cover group sample function. It will record the values and at the end of the simulation, we can generate a report. Before we look at the report, here's another way to define a cover group. If you have an event, for example a clock, you can use it in the cover group definition. Then you no longer need to call the sample explicitly. It will automatically sample the value on event trigger. But in this case, since we are driving the values, we will have to toggle the event ourselves. You can also use cover group in a class. It's pretty similar except that you don't need to create an instance. The cover group name is used instead. I personally find this confusing, but that's the way it is. Now let's get back to the basic cover group example. Once you run a simulation, you can generate a report and it may look like this. This is the summary for cover point A. It knows that A is a 2-bit variable and therefore has 4 possible values. It records that one value was never covered and the other 3 are covered. And therefore the coverage is 75%. Here it shows the detail where the value 0 is never covered, 1 is covered twice, and 2 and 3 are covered at once. Variable B has a separate report. I can only show partial of it because of space reason. Here is a report for the cover group. This is the summary for every cover point and this is the overall summary. The percentage here is an average of the cover point percentage. We can write a different cover group and if we do, there will be a separate report for every cover group. We can label a cover point like this. In that case, the report will show the label name here, here, here and here. This may look trivial but it has an advantage. We'll discuss about that in future video. Now let's look at some options. There is an at least option, list by default 1. If you set it to 2, the value 2 and 3 here will be regarded as uncovered because they are used only once. Value 1 is considered covered as it is used twice. Similarly, the value 1 for CPP will be regarded as uncovered. So the coverage percentage will drop. The at least option is also mentioned here. You can move the option into a cover point like this, so cover point CPA has a different at least value and CPP has a default one. In that case, the value 1 of CPP is covered. The option value and the percentage will be reflected accordingly. Now let's reset the report and look at another option. The weight option is used to change the coverage percentage. In this case, the cover point report will look the same, but the cover group report will indicate a weight of 2 for the cover point CPA, and the overall percentage will change accordingly. Now let's look at another option called auto bin max. A 2-bit variable has 4 expected values. Every value is reported as a row or a bin. We can combine several values into one bin. If we set auto bin max to 2, only 2 bins exist. Value 0 and 1 are grouped into one bin, and 2 and 3 are grouped into another. The bin is considered covered if any of its value is covered. This is useful if the variable size is big. Imagine if A is an 8-bit variable. In this case, half of the values will be grouped into one bin, and the other half into another bin. If you don't specify the value however, it wouldn't have 256 bins here, because it is by default kept at 64. So the variable A here will only have 64 bins by default. This is to prevent the cover point report from being too long. Imagine a 32 bit variable will have more than 4 billion bins. If you want, you can set it to 256 to show every value for this 8 bit variable. There are many other options, but in my opinion, try to use the default and keep them simple. We can also add cross coverage inside the cover group. Here we cross the variable A and B. The report may look something like this. It is pretty similar to a cover point report. It has columns for variable A and B. These two tables show the combination which are missing, and this one shows the combination which are covered. In summary, cover group and cover point are used to indicate coverage. Next, we'll continue with the user-defined bins on cover point.